welcome to Cypress Field in Brookline. This is Dan Kelly alongside Kyle Payne, where tonight we'll be bringing you the 1992 Brookline Little League All-Star Game. The National League tonight will be coached by Joe Campagna of the Pirates and Stan Payne of the Mets, while the American League will be coached by Jeff Cheerson and Buddy Dublin of the Red Sox. Tonight should be a fantastic ball game, Kyle. I agree, Dan. We're looking at a power lineup on both sides, a power defense and power pitching. We're looking at great coaching and an exciting game. Not only do we have that, but we have this year's first home run derby. Well, that's right. There'll be one representative from each of the eight teams hitting home runs for their respective leagues, four from the American and four from the National. We'll be back with all the details on the home run derby as well as the player introductions in a moment. Can you believe this thing? I knew we shouldn't let him drive. Yeah, you said ride with us, you've been drinking. I said he was okay. I owe you guys. I mean it. If you hadn't stopped me, I'd been with him. Come on. Nobody has to drink and drive, and nobody should. Friends keep friends alive. Okay, we're back here and we're about ready to get the home run derby underway. But before we do so, let's meet the American League representatives. Hi, my name is Ralph Perry and I'm 12 years old and I play for the Red Sox. Hello, my name is Calvin Chin and I'm age 12 and I play for the Indians. Hi, my name is Alexis Pappies the Fev. I'm 12 years old and I play for the Tigers. Hi, my name is Darren Coleman. I'm 12 years old and I play for the Orioles. And now the National League representatives. Hi, my name is Courtney Valentine, age 12. I play for the Braves. Hi, I'm Joey Simeone. I'm 12 years old and I play for the Mets. Hi, I'm Kevin Mahoney. I'm 12 years old and I play for the Pirates. Hi, I'm Curtis Bolden. I'm 12 years old and I play for the Mets. Should be an exciting competition. We'll be back with the Home Run Derby in a moment. He loved to be out here in the open, climbing the hills, roaming the fields. The outdoors was his life. He loved the freedom of it all. But the freedom's gone. One mistake changed everything. He was a drinking driver. Drinking and driving can be the mistake of your life. Okay, we're back here and we're about ready to start the home run derby. We just met the eight representatives, four from each league. Joe, Joe Simeone, assistant coach for the Mets, will be pitching to both teams. Kyle, got any predictions on uh, this event? I have to stick with the hometown Mets, Curtis Bolden or Joe Simeone. Yeah, I, I did notice that uh, the Mets, who are coached by a father, have uh, two representatives, where the Dodgers the don't have any. The Dodgers are the only team that don't have a representative in tonight's competition. Deservedly so, Dan. The Mets are the way to go. Oh, but they, they we see, uh, sorry, to, sorry to cut you off, but uh, <laughs> just got a good look at Jay, uh, Jeff Shearson, who will apparently be pitching to his own American League team. And the first batter will be Calvin Chin from the Indians. But go back to what you were saying, Kyle. I was saying that not only do we have, uh, or does it look like that Dr. Joe Simeone will be pitching to each contestant, but Joe is from the Mets. We'll also be seeing Stephen Laser Glazer, a Mets catcher. Stan Payne, the Mets catch, the Mets coach with the microphone. I, I think this is an all-Met, an all-Met uh, atmosphere. Dan, how about you? Uh, well, I know the pride from each league certainly means a lot. And uh, as I was saying earlier, Jeff Shearson of the Red Sox will be pitching the American League, while Joe Simeone will pitch in the National League. That's correct. I remember uh, I played in two All-Star games, one one and lost one. And uh, we never had a competition like this, but I, I do really wish that we did. It looks like a lot of fun out here for the guys. And, uh, now, Dan, I, isn't the Kelly heritage of pirate fame? The Kellys all played for the Pirates, and I was the only one to win a championship. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are, and we're ready. Calvin Shin, first one goes by second base. but Nine to go for Calvin. Calvin. Pitch high. Now he only has eight pitches. If they swing at a pitch, Dan... He still, has, he still has nine left. And that one's a deep drive. That one could be number one. Oh, it's off the fence. <laughs> Calvin's kicking wow. himself. That's oh. a little disappointing. It <laughs> 0 is. 0 for 2, but he still has 8 left. 
as I was saying, when uh, I was 12 years old, I think <laughs> yeah. that uh, nobody in the world would have beaten the National League due to having myself and Sean Fay on the same team. Sh Sean Fay is quite the powerhouse. Actually, oh, there's Calvin. That's a line drive. That would have been a heck of a hit in a game, but just another out in a home run derby, and he's 0 for 4 he's now. He's about half done. 0 for 4. Sherson's looking for the right <laughs> technique so far. And Calvin looking for the pitch. He hasn't found it yet, though. <laughs> and then at he, the halfway he, point, Calvin's 0 for 5 despite two shots. They're not afraid to swing the bat, though, tonight. The chill is not in the air. A little breeze, though. The wind is flying out, and there should be a lot of balls gone tonight. Well, you were predicting the uh, National League. I will have to go out on a limb and say that it's going to come down to a battle between the Braves, Courtney Valentine, and the Orioles, Darren, Darren Coben. So, so you really, you really uh, are a firm believer that this American League is a deeper team. Now, Arlen Shostak and I have uh, already made a gentleman's quarter bet, a bet for a quarter that the National League would win. And Arlen's a coach. I, I may, can, is there any fine for that? Can he be thrown out of a league and <laughs> never coach again for making a bet on his own team? I don't know. Oh, come on, Calvin. Speed it up. Calvin's patient up there. He's the first of eight hitters, as we've been saying. I think this pitcher here is getting a little excited, don't you? He's <laughs> well, Shearson was certainly disappointed when uh, when Calvin's first hit and hit the fence. I expected him to bring his uh, his mock Roger Clemens shirt and uh, and cleats, but here he is in his Gap shirt. There you got a good look at the uh, there you got a good look at the American League out in right field, National League in left field. Oh, the National League is just such a deeper team, Dan. That one belted down third That's base. Debatable. <laughs> Definitely debatable either way. We have a nice crowd on hand already. We have the family, the friends, the teammates, the high school kids. And my groupies. And <laughs> Daniel Kelly's groupies. I have no groupies, Dan. <laughs> uh, so mine, not, mine won't be arriving. <laughs> Come on, Calvin. Calvin another, I think Calvin would have about an 800 batting average at this point. But uh, well, yeah, as uh, I said, no home Especially if he's pitching. Oh, especially. that's another shot. I was going to say, Dan, especially if Chers is pitching each time. <laughs> I think if, all these kids would have 800. <laughs> if this was a double derby, I'd say uh, Calvin Shin could be unstoppable. This is the last one, I believe. He pops it up. He does. Calvin does not hit any. He Calvin, has to be a little Calvin can't win now, oh. Dan. Uh, well, we, we saw, did anybody read his lips there? I think he said, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but here, here comes a kid that when we were doing the uh, introductions, he was as big as me. And although I am not huge... He's bigger than I am, Dan. <laughs> the, I wouldn't, the, I wouldn't the sight mask. of having a 12-year-old your size. And there, there you see everybody. Everybody's switching over to the There's left side. There's one. Curtis's you first got it. one. That's... That cleared both fences. There's that went into one. a backyard. Curtis Bolden gets number one. Boy, is he an impressive-looking kid up there. Coach <laughs> Joe Simeone telling them to calm down. He's oh, Number two. That's number two. Well, the pitch came in at about uh, 95 miles an hour. I tell you, I, I don't know. know what the coach was S thinking. Simeone, Simeone's uh, getting a little hard on his own teammate there, isn't he? <laughs> Come on, Duck. <laughs> and that one's in the dirt. So he's one for, he's one for two so right. far. Dr. Simeone's arm's getting a little tired already. He's pitched three pitches. Bolden really got his arms out on that one, though, that first home run. There's, There's number, number two. two. No doubt about that one. Curtis has two. That's going to be way short. Two for four. I may even call a National League MVP prediction, Dan. Uh, as I said, we have yet to see Courtney Valentine of the Braves, who had two home runs in our last telecast. He's a very impressive However, player. However, Curtis Bolden... Curtis, it's a shot, but... Curtis Bolden is the only National League player to be intentionally walked this year. That by Barbara Ward and her Braves. But uh, Barbara Ward also intentionally walked Jonah Lee. That would... Uh, <laughs> Of the Orioles, so uh, who's, Barbara, not, who, who's not even in the competition? Barbara. So that could tell you how deep the Ori how ba deep the American League is. Barbara, <laughs> Barbara plays it by the numbers, huh? Is it Barbara Sparky Anderson Ward? Uh, is it safe to say number three? I'd call it wow. so, Dan. If, that, if it weren't for that tree, somebody would have a broken window right wow. now. It's a good thing no parked cars were there. Curtis is staying very relaxed up the plate, though. That's another shot. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Jeez, it's a good thing they're not measuring how far was, these things would that, go. That one was hit out. That one was hit out to uh, Billy Goldman of the Braves. You still <laughs> got away from that one. That's number four. And finished with four. Holy cow! Wow. Curtis Bolden being congratulated by his pitcher and his teammates. 
Wow. That's nice. This is fabulous. Break that they're out the all, tape measure on that one. They're all cheering for each other. This is what it's all about, Dan. Can we use any more cliches? <laughs> Four home runs. Four home and runs for Curtis Bolden. after one batter a team, the score is 4-0. Coming up for the American League. 4-0 American League. Red Sox, Ralph Perrin. Ralph, Ralph, Ralph Perrin. Perrin is up from the Red Sox. Uh, Ralph and Curtis? Wow. <laughs> they really, watch your step, uh, Ralph. They really. Jeff, Jeff Chairson of the Red Sox will be pitching to his own player here. And as we saw with uh, Simeone and uh, Dr. Curtis, Dr. Dr. that it, that uh, it Dr. Dr. Simeone, that it uh, sometimes pays off to pitch to a kid on your own team because they're used to you from batting practice. So Dan, I'm, I, I'm I don't want you making big any excuses, bat here. please. Uh, I'm predicting a big at bat here. I, That's not. all I'm saying. Well, actually, I'd like to see Ralph. Ralph has been one of my one of my favorites over the over the year covering Brookline youth baseball. As as we said, just to make the All Star team proves that these kids are a notch above most of the other players at their level, and uh, being selected to participate in the home run contest is just another honor. Wow. Bang! I I say that number line. one. And the call is correct. I got to say that I'm the one that predicted he'd have a big at bat, and he is holding true to my claim already. Dan, Dan that's one home run. <laughs> it's one home run in one swing. One for one. <laughs> yeah, but he is being a little too selective, maybe? I don't know if it's too selective, because, quite frankly, there's no time limit. I'd wait for my home run pitch. <laughs> uh, I can't blame him. But, Dan, that's because you probably wouldn't hit home runs with the ease that these guys did. You aren't Sean. Oh, my God. Um, No, that uh, one just fall short of the fence, and I gotta say that I hit more home runs by the time I was ten than you hit in your uh, career. Dan, so, my career was cut short. You you know that it was, it was the injury, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> From a two-time All-Star to a kid that just never made the bigs, Kyle, <laughs> I'd have to uh, say that you should keep it down. And this is one impressive kid. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing him on my team when I played. Uh, I bet you wouldn't. He's quite the athlete. Because quite frankly, I wouldn't want to oh. face him. That's another one. No, it's not. Yes. That's a ground rule double. One, one home run for Curtis Bolt for uh, Ralph Parent. This is Ralph Parent. He's got to beat four if he wants to win this thing. Well, it's a team competition, Kyle. For his team. <laughs> and he is only the second batter, so there's still plenty of time here. There sure is. Well, the hot dogs are out. Ooh, big cut. Big cut. I felt that breeze. Hey, there's certainly no use in holding back at all at this point. I mean, if you hit a, if you hit a single, a double, and miss it completely, there it, it is. doesn't matter. Oh, oh, he's had three that hit the wall, and he's not happy right now. Wow, Jonah Lee of the Orioles tried to catch that one, and that one was almost gone. And if Jonah Lee had robbed his teammate of a home run, <laughs> then I think we could have seen a little dissension <laughs> among the uh, American League players. Possibly. And we're the night's still young. Whoa. That, wa that wasn't really a great pitch there, but he, he went with the pitch and almost... This guy's just going to get under the ball yes. and go for the high fly because he can get to that wall. There's no question about it. He's, he's one for seven. He has three remaining. Three chances. That's going to be a pop-up. That's going to fall short, I think. And I don't know why they're out there catching these. Yeah, it's it's disappointing. I mean, it, of course they need it. Although they are That could to be. be number two. It is. That is number two. Ralph, it's two. And it'd be nice to see him. Congratulations, Ralph. Here. It he's, would. He's two for nine. Be nice to see him get another one here. At least put he, himself in the he individual gets, He gets ten cuts. Let's make it a good one. Now, uh, sir. He's going to go two for ten, but... He so, the National League still the team to beat. That's it. That's it. It's four to two. And now coming up will be Kevin Mahoney of the Pirates. Cherson walks off the mound. Dr. Simeone on two. Ralph Parent gets a nice hand of applause for a job well done. Congratulations, Ralph. <laughs> Kevin Mahoney, the successful most player of the Pirates and the, the National League. I, I hate to interrupt you, but did you just say the successful most player? Yes. That made no sense. That does make sense, Dan. Go look it up. Successful most. As in the winning most or the... The winningest. No, win winning is, man, yeah, successfulest? No, most, most successful. Most successful is what you were looking for. But that's enough for the grammar lesson. Back to Kevin Mahoney, whose first one chops. There you got a good look at Kevin. 
Wow, there's number one. That would have cleared any fence, Dan. I, I, I'll probably never be able to hit something like that. Uh, there's That's number two. two. And uh, the, is the National League running away with this, Dan? It's six to two. Oh, big cut. Simeone, Simeone doesn't want to see. Uh, oh, yes, he does. I, I'm sure. I'm sure this is all good spirited. Dr. Simeone, I mean. Kevin Mahoney. I saw him play when he was 10 years old. He hit a home run. So that that proves that uh, a lot of his power doesn't come from the fact that he's an exceptionally big kid. It's just a great cut he has. He yep. has a beautiful swing, and if he connects, it's he's it's one of those. To go a long he's one way. of those naturally gifted uh, athletes. He plays pop Warner, and he's great at that too. Kevin Mahoney has three. Whoa. When he hits him, you don't even really need to look. Unless, I didn't look. Unless you want to find out where it lands. I mean, is somebody on these shagging them? Wow. He hit that one a thousand that, miles that an hour. That thing's going to cut right through the fence. It. <laughs> there you see Jolton Joe Simeone throwing up fastballs. Do Jolton Dr. Joe Simeone. You seem a little hung on that, and I'd prefer if you just kept quiet for a while. Okay. <laughs> Now, how would you like it if I called him Mean Gene Kelly? Three remaining. Three remaining for Kevin Mahoney. He already has three homers. He has... He'll stick at three for right now. Oh. Ground rule double. Has no meaning right now. We're looking at a home run. He's waiting for his pitch, too. That was a little high. Duck Simeone in his tennis attire. <laughs> wow. What a cut he has. He does have a great cut, doesn't he? He's three for nine. He has to hit this one. A tie teammate, Curtis Bolden. Can can you feel the tension, Dan? Dan, Dan? I I can't feel it, Kyle. I, I can feel it too, man. <laughs> He's not going to do it. Curtis Bolden will remain in the league, but Kevin Mahoney does a great job. A stellar performance homers. for the young 12-year-old. And after two home, after two batters, it is seven to two. And now. Now up for the uh, American League will be Alexis Papias Lefebvre. 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 No, it's not. It's Lefebvre. As far as I'm concerned, Dan. I'd, I'd like to get an opinion in here. Me too. Uh, I will work on that later. We'll call him Alexis right Coach now. Coach Madigan. Coach Madigan. Uh, how, how do you pronounce Alexis' last name? Papias Lefebvre. Lafave. So my apologies to the, I was to the correct, Lafave I family. <laughs> All right. Now I want the uh, viewing audience to count how many different ways I laughed this evening. I think the viewing audience is trying to block you out at this point, Kyle. You're like a bad night. I imagine so. Uh, we we would like to extend our congratulations to Andrew Gamir, who will be graduating tomorrow and could not make it tonight. That's the reason that I am been shitting. <laughs> Uh, so congratulations to the Gamir family because Patrick also, Andrew's twin brother, will be graduating. Alexis is having problems up the plate, and uh, I think he might be Alexis just pulling just, a little too hard to go for the homer just instead a, of just swinging naturally. Now he just down cut done. on that one. I, I think but, it's uh, Cherson. I don't think he's giving him anything to pitch it, to swing it. I'd hate to see if there was a pitching competition. Uh, I'd say the American League would run away just based on the fact they have Alexis. I, I, hate, I hate to agree with you. I hope he's pitching but, but tonight. But I will. I hope he's pitching tonight because I'd like to see it. Uh, well, we'll be looking at our starting pitchers. are Ralph Parent for the American League and Bill Goldman of the Braves for the um, National League. So Ralph Parent for the American League. and But that doesn't mean Alexis cannot come in in relief. You are correct, Dan. As usual. As usual. But I Alexis didn't say, I didn't say anything incorrect, though. Alexis uh, hasn't hit a home run yet, but he's had a few good cuts. He stands in there like a champ, though. Wow. He, he had some solid line drives. He has. The infield wouldn't be getting any of these. He has one more. He's 0 for 9, but Alexis still has hope. Let's look at him bash this one. It is 7 to 2, but I will not count the American League out of it until Darren, Darren Corbin has gotten a chance to hit. There it is. Does he do it? Does he do it? I hope so. Ah. Uh, Just falls. Kane's Enjoy. call. Not successful. That's a little disappointing. I'd like everybody to know that Stephen Glazer is tonight's catcher. You, you mentioned the, it. And I, I know. But, and but you gave him a bad nickname. Bad. Uh, the, the nickname, however, was done by the citizen, the Brookline citizen, Dan Greenfield. And uh, that's the one we'll stick with. Here's Joey Simeone. Being pitched to by his father, Dr. Joe Simeone. Now, if uh, Dr. Simeone is anything like my dad, he'll be doing his best to strike out his son here. <laughs> no, no. 
I, I, I don't think I wouldn't compare it, Mr. Mr. Kelly and Simeone father. Mr. Kelly, probably one of the winningest coaches in league history, or successful most. Was, was that gone there? <laughs> was that a home run? Went through the fence. Went through the fence, I guess. They're not. They're not counting them on that we one. We didn't see that one on the monitor. Joey's zero for four now. Would like to say hi to Joey's sister Sarah, classmate of ours. Sarah will be here tonight. I'm looking for her right now. Actually, we're talking groupies. Sarah. Sarah probably my only one. I <laughs> also heard that she's coming to see her brother Kyle. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I don't think that she's her brother and her dad. Because she's coming to see the whole Mets on Oh, there it is. There's one for Joe. Oh, Joe. go Joey. Joey. One of the two Baker School members on this National League All-Star team. Uh, Curtis Polden, who leads competition, went to Heath School. How many How many Heath School men are there today, Dan? Uh, let me just take a look down the roster here. Well, I'd like to note that but that is home run two. Take a look at Joey home run Simeone's number two. second He's tied with. Let me look here. He's tied with Ralph Parent for the second spot. Uh, two home runs. He's got a couple more cuts up there. Dr. Joe Simeone pitching to his son, Joe Simeone. Three kids from Heath, uh, Kyle. Heath School. Uh, but can we count Stan Payne? Stan Heath went to School Baker and so did I. Um, I went to Heath, and I think I could beat you and your father combined in a home run derby. <laughs> I'd like to challenge. I'd like to challenge Gene and Mike, to, uh, Gene and Dan, to uh, a home run competition. And as Joe Simeone gets congratulated by his teammates, Joey see... hit two homers, and the score is now nine to two. But here comes the man I think I think could pull in the American League over the hump. Who is this? Darren Coben. Darren Corbin of the Orioles. Coben. Let me do the pronunciation, Kyle, because quite frankly, you're not that good at it. I'd like to see the players get out of the way and at least give these a these oh, gives this a chance. That one, that one would not have been out regardless. As far as I'm concerned, I was informed that they are supposed to be there. It's pro Coven. probably just a way to give uh, the other players who want to participate <laughs> in the home and the contest just something to do, basically. Coben, Coben looking for his pitch. Uh, he's swung in a few good ones. I think uh, the American League would be better off if I was out there pitching Dan, because Dan, I pitched shush, batting shush practice, already, and Dan, quite frankly, I was fabulous. You, you don't hear me talking about all the things I'm good at, do you? you well, go ahead. I'll give you your opportunity now. What are you good at? Um. Uh, anyway, Coben. <laughs> Darren is 0 for 2. The da Darren's, Darren's still more for 0 for 2, Dan. I don't think so. I think he's only 0 for 2. I, I would call that at least halfway through. How many... He's one for three now. Cameraman John Healy informs us. So basically, he I has the again. three, and as usual, you're wrong, Kyle. There's one for four now, and Darren will have to hit all six <laughs> to tie his team Darren, up. Darren will. <laughs> and a big cut gets the helmet falling off there. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay, so we'll see this man walk through again. <laughs> Taryn's having his problems out there. <laughs> I don't know if you can attribute that to uh, over-anxiousness or uh, the pitching of Jeff Cheerson. Jeff looks fabulous out there, by the way. Jeff is an ace. There ain't pro scouts looking to recruit <laughs> someone who can uh, retire 12-year-olds without a problem. That's right. Jeff might be able to play for the... Uh, Jeff's your man. <laughs> for the cosmetics softball team, I think he could play for. Well, he has those sideburns pumping. <laughs> he does. All he needs now is a ponytail they, they and a set of Jeff. pumps. Wow. <laughs> Jeff is fab. Sign him up for Beverly Hills 90210. Look at him. Look at that form. Dylan McKay? Who? Dylan who? But Darren Co Cobbin has gone, and he has only hit one. Okay. The more so faces Courtney we Valentine see, will get up. Oh, look. There's Stan Payne for the you. The National League has already clinched the team championship. Courtney Valentine up here. Now we're looking at icing on the cake for both teams. Here's my idol. Dan, it looks like... Can I tell you I told you so? Um, here's Courtney Valentine of the Braves, <laughs> who I predicted... Uh, Dan, I predicted, he's already 0 for 1. I predicted would win the uh, individual ch championship. Coach Joe Simeone looks like he wants to give that to a Met, though. He's just firing out there. He's firing. <laughs> well, his arm is warmed up, and... 
Simeone. Dr. Simeone. Well, we can call him Coach Simeone if you'd like. I, I think uh, Coach Simeone almost had I call, a I called him Jolt and Joe when I got yelled I, at. I don't so. like Jolt and Joe, Dan. I, I don't think Dr. Simeone would appreciate that. Preach? Appreciate that. Courtney is having problems up there. Quite frankly, I think he's saving it for the game. Or you hope. Uh, he hopes. I love him. He had oh. two homers in our last broadcast. And he had, he had another one for a double, and he had another one that he was robbed at the warning track that also could have been gone. It could have been, Dan. He's fabulous. He is fabulous. Though. Leads both leagues in home runs. He has 10. If he was on the American League team, he wouldn't be that, that good, though. Would he? I don't get what you mean, Kyle. <laughs> Courtney's having problems, but I don't think he should be discarded. Courtney, be my Valentine. Why? Why do you need to give kids nicknames, Kyle? They're just I, not I like good. That. It's Courtney Valentine. He now has one left. I'd like. I'd like to see him hit one about uh, 800 feet here. That's what I want to see. But it won't happen. You, you don't like Courtney, be my Valentine. So Courtney fails to hit any. But the National League takes no. home the team championship in the first ever home run derby by a score of seven. To two. No matter. This was a. F There's Stan. Uh, Coach Stan Payne called it 10 2. It I is think 10 that's, I think that's controversial. But may I say that the individual champ would like to tip our caps to Curtis Bolden of the Mets, who won the individual home run championship. And Ralph Perrant getting it for the um, getting it for the American Leaguers. He was the American League champ. He was. We'll be back in a moment. We'll be back with all the action in a moment. It's simple. One night, I don't drink. I drive them home. Another night, my friend doesn't drink. He drives us home. Nobody had to worry about getting home. They knew they had me to drive them. I took care of them, you know? Did I have a good time? Listen, that's the night I'm the best friend my friends could have. I'm bringing them home alive. Hey, we can handle it better. Next time you go out, take your turn at passing up alcohol for the night. And bring them home alive. Okay, now we're about ready to introduce the American League roster for tonight's All-Star Game. There you see Coach Jeff Cherson of the uh, Red Sox doing the announcement. Good evening, everyone. And now, announcing the American League... Give them a little welcome to the crowd. Is Jesse Carton of the Red Sox. And from the Indians, Calvin Chin. Calvin Chin of the Indians, a participant in tonight's home run contest. From the Orioles, Darren Corbin. Darren Corbin of the Orioles, also a home run participant. Uh -huh. From the Indians, Lucas Epp. There's Lucas Epp of the Indians. Josh Friedman of the Tigers. From the Indians, Jared Geller. Hey, Jared Geller of the Indians. From the Indians again, Lenny Hong. Also from the Indians, Lenny Hong. From the Orioles, Dan Horwitz of the Orioles. Also from the Orioles, Jonah Lee. And from the Red Sox, Nicky Leung. Nick Leung of the Red Sox. Again from the Red Sox, John Martin. All right, John. John Martin of the Red Sox. Also from the Red Sox, Dave Modigliani. From the Tigers. Here's the Tigers, Chris Murphy. From the Red Sox, Ralph Parent. Ralph Parent of the Red Sox. The two home run in the home run derby. From the Tigers, Alexis Papias Lafave. Alexis Papias Lafave. One of the finest pitches in the American League. From the Tigers, from the Tigers again, Esteban Pena. 
Esteban Pena of the Tigers. And finally, Mike Schaffrier of the Orioles. Getting ready to introduce the coaches for tonight's game. Kevin Ng from the Indians, who is not able to make tonight's ball game. From the Tigers, they have Tom Madigan. They have father-son combination to Arlen Showstack right there. They have Nathan Pop Showstack. And they have the ninth, oh, they have Buddy Dublin of the Red Sox. So that does it. There's the American League All-Star team. We're about ready for the NL intros in a moment. There you see Stan Payne of the Mets announcing the lineup. There's Carlton Astley of the Pirates. Craig Capania of the Pirates. There's Curtis Bolden, tonight's home run king from the Mets. Very impressive hitter. There's Will Dick from the Dodgers. There's the Braves, Sean Guilfoy. There he is. Steven Glazer of the Mets. Get out of the way. Billy Goldman of the Braves. Nate Link from the Mets. John Lynch from the Dodgers. John Lynch from the Dodgers. Kevin Mahoney from the Pirates. Kevin Mahoney had three homers in tonight's competition from the Pirates. Nima Mazzubi from the Braves. Nima Mazzubi of the Braves. Matthew Quinn from the Dodgers. There's Matt. Alex from the Pirates. All right. There's Alex Ruane of the Pirates. Joey Simeone from the Mets. All right, the Mets, Joey Simeone. Quincy Valentine from the Braves. The Braves, Courtney Valentine right there. And Michael Walsh Ellis of the Dodgers to round out the players for the National League. And the coaches as Joe Capania of the Pirates, Barbara Ward of the Braves, Bob Monahan of the Dodgers, and our PA man, Stan Payne. The Mets. There we go. <laughs> there we have it, Dan. I, I've heard it. all these kids' names so many times that. That it makes it, it's just this is going to be an excellent game. Well, all the stars are out tonight, and this should be a good one. Heard all the introductions, and now the National League is ready to take the field, get this all star game underway. They're the home team tonight. Obviously, they'll be facing the away team, American League, up at bat. Billy Goldman is the starting pitcher for the Braves. There you got a good look at him. I started pitching when I was 12 years old in the all star game, <laughs> and I was, I was, I, I did. I believe I was you. The winning that. pitcher, but I gotta say that I was more nervous pitching in the All Star game than I was pitching in the uh, town championship. Uh, it's I a never, very nervous experience because one through nine in the lineup is all excellent hitters. I just never had either of these fears. Pardon me, Kyle. I've never, I've never been nervous like that about a baseball game because I've never been in that situation. Well, well, you didn't play in either the All Star game or the town championship. Uh, Dan, I never made it to the majors. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. My dad, my dad started coaching a couple of years after I left the minor leagues, and and well, I just never did much in high school. And quite, and quite frankly, that would have been your best hope. <laughs> I did do a, I did do a, I, I did do a minor league uh, all-star game. <laughs> there you have Billy Goldman. There you have the heads of half the American League team. The American League. 
lineup will go as followed. Lenny Hong will be leading off at second base. Ralph Parent, the pitcher. Alexis Papias Lefebvre at center field. Calvin Chin at short. Jesse Carton at first base. Esteban Peña at third base. Chris Murphy catching. Josh Friedman in left field. And Lucas Epps in right field. But we've been told that this lineup is due to change every inning. So Every inning. We're, we're bound to see a lot of guys. Let me just quickly. The umpires for tonight's ball game at home play will be John Caruso, a two-year umpire with a state license, a carpenter on the full-time. Chris Jordan, an all-around official, officiates soccer, all types of basketball and football, as well as baseball. He's been, he's been umpiring 11 years since he was 13, five years with the Massachusetts state license. Well, Chris does a lot of our summer league games. He's an excellent umpire, as I'm sure is John. Although I've never seen him. So as the coaches talk and the players get ready and the opening warm-ups happen. This this should be exciting. Any prediction for I was just gonna ask you. <laughs> My predictions? Uh, an all-around slug fest from both sides. If I had to pick a winner in tonight's game, I'd have to sit I'd have to go with the uh, American League, but for the sole reason of their pitching depth. The National League does have some solid Solid players. They have a solid pitcher on the mound in the form of Bill Golden. That man right there, Bill right Golden, there. has been pitching excellent baseball since oh. the moment he came on. I've I've been watching that He's that little boy there since um since he came, he came up. He came in the. Uh, He's been a Mets killer. He came in the year after his uh, twin brothers. Jim and Fred left the major leagues, and he picked up right where they left off. He's fabulous. Jim and Fred now both excellent tennis players on hand this evening. Somewhere out there. Are they groupies of yours, Dan? No, they're just friends. I I can't say that. <laughs> Kyle, you're way too hard on yourself. There you look at John Caruso. Imagine that. He looks ready for tonight's ball game. Doesn't he? Everybody's getting excited. The coaches are all ready. Pops Jostek goes over to first base. Coach Chris Jordan Bird runs is, over to uh, first base. Jeff Cherson. And uh, did you notice that Cherson was quite the pumped up individual in pregame? <laughs> Jeff, Jeff does get a little excited about everything he does, doesn't he? He he did get pretty excited in, uh, in uh, the home run derby as well. He was pitching. He was getting awfully upset. There you see a cruiser in the back of your uh, monitor right there. I, I hope that's not here for either of us, Dan. Certainly not me. But you never we're know. about ready to start live action is Lenny Hong, the second baseman from the Indians, will lead things off against Big Billy Goldman. First pitch of the All-Star game is taken low for ball one. Steve Glazer missing his first ball of the night. That was a tough ball for a catcher to get in front of, Dan. Well, I think Glazer would have been a little more apt to throw his body in that had there been any runners on base, but... First pitch of the game, there's no need to hurt yourself. Second delivery, Hong chops the shortstop. Courtney Valentine cannot handle it, and Hong is on first base with the error. Unfortunately, Courtney thought he could get over there in time. Didn't get his body in front of it. Tried to backhand the ball once he realized it was going a little too quickly. Botched the play up. It was a nice attempt, though. And there we have Lenny Hong on first base. Lenny Hong is a threat to steal every time he gets on base. He's a very <laughs> speed very speedy player and you hate to have a runner on base when this man Ralph Parent steps up to play. You hate to have a runner on base when any of these American League batters <laughs> get up on. <laughs> Basically an all-star lineup from top to bottom which is why it's the all-star game I suppose. Imagine so. <laughs> Walking the field before the game Dan you'll notice uh, the grounds crew did an amazing job better than they usually do the of, field. Um, of getting the field in tip-top shape for this festive occasion. The field does look very good for tonight's game. Wow, Goldman threw some heat on that one. Uh, we won't have any problem hearing John Caruso's call. I don't. I don't think I need to call balls and strikes tonight. He's certainly getting into it. Counts one and one. Uh, Dan doesn't look like I can, I can hold a job for Brooklyn Youth Baseball. They wouldn't let me uh, keep umpiring either. I, I don't. I don't get it. <laughs> Counts one and one to Ralph. Ralph Parent. Do you, do you think Goldman did that on purpose? Pitching in on the one, of, probably the pow most powerful hitter in the league. Do you think it was a purposeful in pitch? Who uh, knows? Do you, oh, the count's two and two. I don't know if you meant uh, the entire Little League Baseball or just the American League, because I think Courtney Valentine and his 10 home runs have something to say about uh, 
being the most powerful hitter. I agree. The count's full. The throw to second. Glazer has Hong nailed. Wow. Lenny Hong, Lenny Hong was about halfway down the baseline when Glazer's throne reached Alex Ruane. That was so, quite a throw. So wow. Glazer's throw making up for Valentine's error on Hong's and parent walks. The count's full. Despite two calls of low strikes that poor parent was the recipient of, he walks. So quickly again, there's a runner on first base. Papius so Dan, it's Papius Lefebvre. We finally get it straight. I don't. I don't think the PA announcer knows any more than I do. I I, I tend to think that Dr. Simeone, being a, but for the sake of argument, Alexis Papius Lefebvre is up. Big lefty up there. The Indians have a couple of lefties, and I. Oh, the they've got him in a pickle. Rather. Pop possibly. He's out too. They're wow. off the two. Whoa. And he can't... Wow, when you called him uh, the laser glazer, you must have meant because of that laser arm he has. He is two for two. Uh, wouldn't it appear so, Dan? And Bill Goldman doesn't have to worry about letting guys on base because Glazer gets them off as soon as they get on. Watch the car. The faves pitch right on into the middle of the street as the kids go running. Go there near Eddie's Dairy King truck. Goldman is throwing awfully hard out there, though, for the NL. He looks good. I tell you, I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end as a 12-year-old of one of Goldman's fastballs. Dan? 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 Goldman's delivery. Alexis hits that one foul. Couldn't quite get around on that. Two foul balls for Alexis. Count even at two and two. Alexis is just looking to make some contact here with two strikes on him. And he does so, that should fall. Joe Simeone can't quite get to it. Makes a nice play though and will hold Lefebvre to a single. So, the, in, the American League has their third runner of the inning. But the first two are thrown out stealing. I don't think Alexis will steal at this point. Alexis got a nice job of getting that ball out there. Simeone cutting it off. And here's the cleanup man, Calvin Chin from the Indians. He is a terrific hitter up there. A stellar job in tonight's home run derby for Calvin. He didn't hit any out, but as I was saying during the competition, he had, he had a, a ton that would have been in there for doubles or uh, certainly, certainly extra bases. And that one's shot to Ruane at second, who flips to Valentine, and they get the force at second base. So. The, the American League manages to get three runners on base but cannot score on any of them. And after one half an inning, the score is American League zero, Nationals coming up. Sometimes you know you're the one everybody's counting on to do the job. Whether you're a player or a fan. The one who can step in and turn things around so everybody wins. We lose too many lives when fans drive after drinking too much. So before you go to the game, choose the one guy you can count on to drive home, the designated driver. When you think about it, that's your most valuable player. All right, national, the American League rather is in the field here. We're ready to take a look at them. There you see Ralph Parent, the pitcher from the Red Sox. Catching from the American League is Chris Murphy of the Tigers. First base, Jesse Carton of the Red Sox. Second base, there's Lenny Hong of the Indians. Third baseman, Esteban Pena of the Tigers. Shortstop, there's Calvin Chin of the Indians. Left field, Josh Friedman from the Tigers. Center field, there's Alexis Lafay of the Tigers. And in right field, I can't see. I believe that that's Lucas Epps out there. It is Lucas Epps. Yep. Leading things off for the National League will be Alex Ruane. Alex's brother Gabe played for the Pirates last year, and he was fantastic. He won the Herb Silverman Award. They were a, they were a great brother tandem on the Pirates, and now Ruane also carrying on the Ruane heritage. First parent delivery is taken for strike one. He also throws hard out there. 
We're going to be seeing a lot of good pitchers for both teams out there tonight. Wow, strike two. And Wayne got to lift the bat off the shoulder here. This is a very noisy crowd. A lot of parents here, they're all very into the game. But you love to see it. You love to see that. Strike three. Wow. Have you ever <laughs> seen a pitcher at this level pitch that fast? I, 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 I've, I seen, I've seen equals. I've seen equals. I don't know how many I've seen better, though. Let's strike one to Steven Glazer, the fine defensive catcher from the Mets. Steve Glazer, a three-year participant of the Mets. Fouls went off there. You were talking about uh, hard-throwing pitchers. I remember when I played, my first, uh, when I was 11 years old, rather, David Lilly played, pitched for the Orioles, and uh, Dan Boland pitched for the, the, uh, the Indians, I believe, and both of them could throw the ball extremely hard. But I think Parent's right up there in both of their class. Parent coming from an incredible athletic family, including cousins Jacques and Greg, both high school students. Greg Remember is playing? also graduating tomorrow. He is one of the bigger kids, <laughs> <laughs> bigger kids that I know. It's a good thing to have Greg on our side, huh, Dan? Yeah. Wow. Laser hits that one, foul down the third baseline. Just foul. He kept his head in there. Now we're getting a youngster to shag that ball. Or a father, actually. I think a lot of the uh, what helps with pitching is once you build up a reputation, the opposing hitters are a little intimidated. Wow, Glazer pokes one to left. Oh, it's dropped by Friedman out in left field. Glazer's going for two, and he'll be in there. So on the Josh Friedman error, Glazer strolls into second base. There was As nothing Josh Friedman could do about that ball, Dan. He walked right in front of it. And it just, I don't know, I don't know what happened, but it, it, it was lost. Got himself in perfect position. That's just a, it's one of those ones where you kick yourself afterwards because Friedman did everything right, just didn't come up with the ball. If Ralph Perrin is lucky, his catcher will make the fine defensive plays out there also. Now it's Courtney Valentine. Crushing Courtney, hit two home runs in uh, our last broadcast, as I said. Glazer a threat to steal, so we have to watch him. Wow. Parent throws another heater. As I was saying, a lot of, a lot of it with pitching is that uh, once you build up a reputation, the opposing hitters get up there a little nervous, and that makes you even tougher to hit. Oh, Valentine takes that one. Very questionable call. Is that, that's his second strikeout. This is the first, also one of the first and only pitchers I've seen in Brookline Youth Baseball to have more than just a fastball. He's got a curveball and a slider also. As I, as I said, he uh, he's one of the few who has it this year league, but year in and year out, they have been fantastic pitches. I mean, there are so many good ones down throughout the years. Tough to single out one player, but he's certainly good to throw to third base. And he's in there on the delayed steal. So some heads up base running by Steve Glazer. And now there's a runner. There's a runner on third with two down for Kevin Mahoney of the Pirates. Kevin was also an all-star last year as an 11-year-old. As Kyle was mentioning earlier, fantastic all-around athlete. Parents delivery, <laughs> chop foul. That goes in back of the bleachers. And onto the hard pavement. Surrounding the basketball court. Out. And the count Behind goes the bleachers. to 1-1. One, one. So parents in control out there still. The delivery fouled off again. Would we, say that, would we say that Mahoney is trying to pull the ball? <laughs> Mahoney, one of the more dangerous hitters in all in either league, is having trouble here getting around on Parent. He has the adrenaline flowing. The one-two pitch. Oh, that's right. I'm getting out of the way of this one. I'm hoping that doesn't uh, hit me. Me too. I, I hate getting hit by foul balls. <laughs> Uh, wow. Geez. And Mahoney. Gee, I'll tell you, that was the most action I've seen in two years as far as the baseball is concerned. <laughs> <laughs> so Mahoney fouls off another one. The count remains at one and two. Parent has definitely hit his groove here. Oh, well, apparently, Parent was in his groove in the home run derby. Fantastic all around players. Ralph Parent of the Red Sox. His parent chews on his gum. You don't want yeah, to. You don't want to let uh, Kevin Mahoney get on here because uh, Curtis Polden stands on deck. 
McCone's two and two. Glazer will not try to score though. Catcher Chris Murphy with a fine play, getting right on top of that ball right away. Chris Murphy did get right in front of that ball, but if he hadn't, Parent was right at home plate, uh, quick on the release. Knowing just where to cover, the second baseman ran over to third base. It was all set. And that can be attributed to fine coaching, I'd say. And Mahoney fouls off another one. I think that's his fifth foul ball, if I'm not mistaken. And he is hanging tough. I think you are correct, Dan. Oh, wow. Barbara Ward. Did you see that throw? Barbara Ward is one of the most active coaches in either league. <laughs> she uh, warms up her pitcher before innings. Oh, Mahoney strokes one to center field. That's going to be off the fence. He's going to go for two. The throw by Friedman. He's safe. Mahoney is in there with a double. So he battled, and he certainly earned the double on that at bat. And the National League strikes first and takes the one nothing lead. Kevin's no Ricky Henderson, but I'll tell you, right when he hit that ball out of there, he made the most out of his wall hit, stretched a single into a double. He was definitely thinking double from the moment he made contact there. And now here's Curtis Bolden, the home run champ tonight. And this is power versus power all the way. This should be a fantastic The immovable just force to watch. versus the irresistible object, you may say. Wow, you see Curtis makes a big cut. That's strike one. The delayed steal by Mahoney. You said he's no Ricky Henderson, but he's out to prove you wrong there, Kyle. Well, he, he steals no, third. He's no Ricky Henderson. We, we may be on long lines of a Mike Greenwell he's type a runner. Smart, smart, smart ball players, Kevin Mahoney. And Curtis Bolden, the mean one, right up in the plate. Counts 0 1. Wow, he hits a shot to center. Alexis catches it, though. A routine fly out for Curtis Bolden. No run scored. They score one run. And after one completing, the score is National League 1, American League nothing. When it comes to teamwork, fans and players have something in common. If somebody on your team is having an off night, it's time for you to take charge. We lose too many lives because some fans are not team players. They'll let a friend drive after drinking. You can help cut those road losses. If somebody in your crowd has too much to drink, tell him to pass the keys. You drive, pal, okay? <laughs> Good move, buddy. It's the biggest assist he can make. All right, thanks for coming over, guys. Okay, we're back here in the second inning of the All-Star game. American League up to bat, facing a 1-0 deficit. And there you see Curtis Bolden, the new pitcher for the National League. Curtis slide deep in his last at bat. Taking the situation in, he's going to be set to pitch. Curtis is certainly an imposing figure out on the mound, as well as up the plate. Leading things off in the American League will be Darren Corbin. Darren is one of my personal favorite players. Sure then. And that's the reason why he makes the most of every swing with a huge cut there. You got to like him. Quickly 0 and 2. And Curtis in his groove. 0 2 pitch. Taken low. 1 and 2. Got the benefit of that a little outside. Darren won a game on Brookline Access Television this year with the last inning home run. Fouls that one off. It was to defeat Barbara Ward's Braves, so. He certainly killed the National League before, looking to do so again here. The one-two pitch. Followed back again. Current remains at one-two. I asked him before the game if he was gonna hit any out tonight, and he said he was hoping a few. Didn't get any in the uh, home run derby, so he has some making up to do here. The one-two pitch. Taken high, two and two. The wind sort of died down here. I don't know what we're gonna be seeing as far as home runs go though. Cone is now full. As, as you were saying about the wind, a lot of times with a lot of the home runs, the wind doesn't play as big of a factor because some of these kids just hit line drive shots and they don't give the wind a chance to play a part. The full p count. It's not a Carbon takes it inside, ball four. So the American League has their lead runner on. This is a huge crowd. <laughs> this is a mitt. No room in the stands. 
Standing room only. The brothers, the sisters, the mothers, the fathers, they're all here. There is Chris, nope, sorry, Esteban Pena of the Tigers. Third baseman in tonight's game. Curtis's delivery taken for strike one. Cobbin very tentative on first base. He with Stephen Glazer behind the plate, you almost have to be though. And this, is an met, two out. this is an all met battery, I noticed. Well, not e not even stealing second. I I'd be uh, wary of a throw down a first base with Glazer behind the plate. The delivery by Curtis taken for a strike. The count is now count is now one and two. Cur Curtis Bolden, hopefully pitching for not the last time on the Brooklyn High School campus. And that's strike three. So Pena goes down, and there's one down, Cobbin on first base, and that will bring up Chris Murphy. Caught the first inning. It's moving to right field in inning number two. Great defensive player and a solid contact hitter as well. I was throwing a little bit to Murphy in batting practice, and he was holding the zone. I think everybody's having fun. This is great to see. Bolden's delivery. Swung on and racked, but just followed down the right field line. Somebody's going to get the... Somebody's got their knock blocked off with one of these foul balls. I just hope it's not me. It's a good thing you're, it's a good thing you're closer to home plate than I am. And I'm a bad defensive player too, so. Well, it remains to be seen. <laughs> Bolden's delivery. <laughs> That's fair. That's, What's the call? Oh, it's a foul ball. A delayed foul call at that. I didn't see. I didn't see a call from either umpire. The only, the only call I saw was that of first base coach um, Tom Madigan. Tom Madigan. Of the Tigers. Tigers. <laughs> Madigan. Chris Murphy hanging tough up there. One two count. Taking ball two. Two and two. Huh. Here we have another of our sophomore members selling hot dogs, Jenny Pantalone. What do you know? Back there. Be nice Just if she could hook us up with a few. The 2-2 two -two count, <laughs> swung on and missed strike three. So Murphy gets his cuts in, but goes down swinging. Bolden has struck an out two here in the second. It's not a word, Dan. What's not a word? And Dave Modigliani of the Red Sox, left fielder in tonight's game, is now up. What's not a word, Kev? Strucken. It's actually he struck out. He struck him out. You you said he struck out eight hitters, didn't oh, you? I said he he's, he has struck out. It, that's Two also hitters. that is also struck out, Kyle. No, no, Dan. Dan, now I now I am sure as Bolden. Kyle, true Gamir, wherever you are, pal. I miss you. <laughs> I miss you. Bolden's pitch swung on and missed here. We're also curious. Uh, no, we're not. Bolden is looking good out there on the mound, wearing number 21. Also won by the Rocket Man, Roger Clemens. And he's resembling him here. Two strikes, looking to strike out the side here. I Bolden's windup and delivery. Swung on and missed strike three. He is striking out the side. Wow, what a performance by Curtis Bolden in the second inning. So for the second inning in a row, the American League get a runner but failed to score. And after one and a half, the score is Nationals one, Americans nothing. Who's that? The driver. So? So he doesn't drink tonight. Look, I'm fine. Look, I'm fine.
for the National League, Joey Simeone. Okay, we're back here in the bottom of the second inning. Ralph Parent still on the mound for the AL, and Joey Simeone of the Mets to lead things off. Wow, first pitch is shot in the gap between center and left. Simeone will hold it first with a single. Fine piece of hitting there by Joey Simeone. Well, I wonder if Sarah saw her brother get the bat right out on that one and just bang it to center field. Center fielder Alexis LeFay getting right over that one. A cutter. Now up the big man, Billy Goldman. Starting pitcher for the National League. Did a fine job in one inning pitching. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Simeone for putting that speaker right in my ear when he announces all the players. Well deserved. <laughs> uh, there's a little protest going on here. They're saying that Goldman's using a softball bat. Dan, didn't you have a problem with the bat in an All-Star game once? When I was 11 years old, they did protest. They said that I was using a non-official Little League bat and tossed me out of the game. Coach Buddy Dublin reminded me of it before tonight's broadcast. But Dan Bolin was pitching, and I needed the extra three inches on the barrel, quite frankly. <laughs> Parents' delivery. Swung on and missed by Goldman. Wow. Simeone's staying exactly where it is, where he is. And I'd have to say that's in his best interest. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> the, the catcher, by the way, is Nick Leung of the Red Sox. Swung on and missed strike two. Leung is a very active catcher, not scared to run all the way down to first just to make sure the guy goes back. He doesn't look like he's afraid to get in the way of the ball either. Not the biggest kid out here, but... No, he'd probably take me, though. <laughs> Guts is more important than size in catching. And he bluffs another throw down to first. Simeone is really faked out, huh? <laughs> uh, Sim Simeone's not going anywhere, let's face it. Well, he's, he's not stealing. I say unless this ball goes just about to the fence. He's or, or through the fence. <laughs> Maybe. Ralph Parent's delivery. Fouled off, and that one's going to be in the stands. I think that hit a, I think that hit a, a member. I'm going to go check on that. A catch. A souvenir? Is that a souvenir? To uh, you have to return it. Oh, you do? Bro Brookline does not let you keep anything. Come on, this is Brookline. It's not like we're in Chelsea. Count is now two and two to Bill Goldman of the Braves. We have got more lineup cards here than I guess you could say Carter had liver pills. I just don't know. <laughs> Never mind. I'll let that one pass, Calf. <laughs> Count is full. Ralph Parent. They see Billy Goldman awaiting the payoff pitch. Taking low ball four. Wait a sec. What's going on? No, it gets his base. Uh, the, up, the up was rethinking it, then decided that after four balls, he will let him go to first base. From the Pirates, the first baseman, Craig Campagna. Here's yeah. Craig Campagna. Coach's son, quite a little athlete also. I got to say, I've seen uh, Craig play both football with my cousin Joey O'Malley. And I've seen him ba play baseball quite a few times, and he's made great strides as an athlete in both sports. Are we vastly throwing, improving? Are we throwing names now? I've seen J Craig play against my brother Sean Payne, and you're right, he is a he is an athlete. Good one uh, at that. Ralph Ralph shows that uh, pitchers need to do a little fielding themselves. There comes off the mound, but Campania was able to advance both runners along. Runners are now on second and third for John Lynch of uh, the Dodgers. I'm curious if we're going to see Ralph next inning. I I tend to think not, it, although it is, a, it is a nine in a game. You might see him go three. D Dan, we're here for quite a while. <laughs> this is, this is going to be a long game. The lights are on here at Cypress Field. And, and as long as I don't shut them off, they'll stay on. <laughs> <laughs> the ever dangerous Kyle Payne. Lynch chops one a second. Lenny Hong cannot handle it. One runs in. Bill Goldman is going to try to score the throw home by Murphy. Leung handles it. Lynch is going a second. He's in there. Lenny Hong showing poor execution of the fundamentals. And the National League strikes for two more. And now they have taken a three-nothing lead. Wow. I've. 
I'd have to say the American League with the type of players they have, though. Oh, before before I can say it, Alex Ruane steps back up to bat. Struck out in his first at bat. Fine second baseman from the Pirates. I was going to say, though, uh, with the type of players the American League has, I don't think I'd be too worried about being down three at this point. I've seen teams come back from 10, 12 run deficits in one inning before in Little League games, so. But you've seen it all. I have seen it all. Because I am me. In his last at bat, Ruane saw three of the toughest pitches he'll ever see at this <laughs> level. So Parent's ready. And he delivers. That's popped up. Parent catches it. Trips on the foul grass. Little pun there? Never mind, Dan. <laughs> Once again, Kyle Payne going right over my head. <laughs> Parent makes a fine catch. He's made both outs this inning coming off the mound. Once on a ground and once on a pop-up. So, uh, the the saw them trying to keep John Lynch. Looked like the coaches maybe wanted him to at least bluff it tagging up on that one. There you got a good look at Steve Glazer, who has just done a fabulous a, job behind the plate in tonight's ball game. Reached on an error. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all those Baker boys are, Kyle. Uh, Steve doesn't go to Baker, um, but you're right, they are. <laughs> Where's Steve go? Any idea? Steven does not go to Baker. <laughs> doesn't go. But he's to wearing an Atlanta Braves hat, and his uniform is already dirty. You gotta like him. You do. Well, you don't have to, but I mean, you, but uh, we do. We we do. <laughs> Steve Glazer up at bat. He bunts. It goes foul, but... It's foul. Had he lowered the bat a little more and... Had he gotten it fair, Kyle. Had he gotten it fair, he would have Basic, a little more. Basically, that was the key. Maybe. Not a bad move, though, with Perrin on the mound throwing heat. It's going to be tough to to get a solid piece. Why not try to bunt one uh, down the line? I don't see it happening again, though. And there are two strikes on Glazer. Parent looks in control out there on the mound still. Glazer desperately trying to get Lynch home. And he pops it up and Parent will make all three outs himself this inning. So, the National League strikes for two more, but Strand's a runner on second base. And after two complete, the score is National League three, American League nothing. Hey, listen up out there. I've been fighting bad guys all my life. And the worst are the people who won't give you a job or an apartment or financing because of your race, accent, sex, or even the way you look. Now, I've always been able to take care of myself. But when you need help, call the Mass Commission Against Discrimination. They're on your side. So when someone doing a number on you, you do a number on them. Back here on top of the th top of the third inning, where John Lynch of the Dodgers is the new pitcher for the National League. National League has changed positions of all their players this inning, From the Red so we'll be keeping you up to date with those changes. Don't get intimidated with these changes. You at home. Nick Leung of the Red Sox, the catcher to lead things off here. I just want to know if we're more entertaining than Leno. Do you think so, Dan? I don't think I don't think this game will be shown in the same uh, time slot, so I don't think we have much to worry about. That's unfortunate. But this could be the finest show on Brookline Access Television. All that and Brookline High School Sport Review with your host Kyle Payne. Well, that is tough to top. It is. John Lynch of the Dodgers out there. Actually, your host would be Kyle J. Payne. I, I would appreciate it if you could continue calling me that. And Nick Leung <laughs> takes ball two, counts two and oh. Nick Leung. Lynch's delivery, taking ball three. Coach Stan Payne told us before the inning that he was going to try to showcase the uh, versatility of the National League athletes, giving them all a chance to play just about every position thus far. They've not made any substitutions, though. The starting nine is still playing. Nick Leung drugs the leadoff walk and sprints down to first base. He gives Lynch something to think about. Leung is certainly a pesky runner down there. 
Well, Leung knocking in the majority, I believe, of the National League's... Oh, I mean, Lynch knocking in the majority of the National League's runs. Come on, Lenny! And he knocked in two of the three in the, uh, that is in the second inning. That's right. So he's trying There's to help Lenny himself Hong. here. Hits one a third. Great play by Ruane. Throws to second. Mahoney's throw to first. He's safe. Ruane with what arguably is the best defensive play of the game and probably what we will continue to call the best defensive play of the game. Ruane made a great backhand stop at third base, threw to Mahoney at second base, who flipped, turned, tried to throw for two. Throw was a little low. Bold, Curtis Bolden made a nice scoop at first base, though. And it's not and now like up is Danny Hurwitz of the Orioles. That was just a fine all-around play by the National League. It was. It's not like, it's not like, um, I've tried to say that sentence three times. Belt it up. Beyond Mahoney. That's going to get in there. Leung Coltman to third. bottles it in right field, and Leung will go to third. So runners at the corners with one out. Oh, I'm sorry, Lenny Hong will go to third. Runners at the corners with one down. I know. Base hit was by Danny Hurwitz from the Orioles. Officially scored by the official scorers as a base hit. A tough play for Mahoney to run over to as Joe Campagna has a conference on the mound with Kevin Mahoney, who will be pitching now, it seems, for mm. Lynch. Stephen uh, Blazer listening to what's going uh, on. No, that's wrong. not true. Dave, David again. Lynch <laughs> David Lynch is pitching, Kyle, and once again, you jump the gun. John Lynch. David, you're, we're confusing Brookline names here. But, uh, well, I got the opportunity. I'd like to say hi to my friend Dave Lynch. And the ground ball shortstop, Mahoney. Simeone to Mahoney. Too many Onis in the middle of that infield. <laughs> but regardless, they get, they get the out. But the American League gets their first run of the ball game, cutting, cutting the lead to 3-1. to one. <laughs> Baloney. Anyway. Calvin Chin, the hard-hitting player from the Indians, is up. And I hear a couple of fans telling them to tie it up. They're down by two, and there's a runner on first. I guess they're calling for the home run. I'd like to see him call it where he's gonna where he's gonna do it. I wouldn't mind seeing Calvin point. I, I would like that. Oh my God! And he should have. There's a home run. <laughs> Three to one. You heard it here. I am the finest oh, predictor the of American all time. League has erupted. The score is tied. It's a new ball game. Calvin Chin failed to hit any home runs in his 10 swings in the home run contest. He saved it for the game, right Kyle. Now that, right now that home run derby seems petty, doesn't it? He just got his team back into it. Come on, put a smile on your face. There you go. There you Being congratulated by his teammates and Pop Shostak. What a rocket. I think, Calvin. He, I think he's going to cool off. Did now. I call that, by the way? Did I call that, we, by the way? We called that, Dan. I'd like to rewind. Can we? I continue to be the finest predictor. I call my shots, that's for, that's for sure. And things don't look to be getting any easier for Lynch as Darren Corbin, who forgot he was up. Whoa. Come on, Darren. John, waiting for his... Ooh, Darren's his bought a new hairdo for tonight's game. <laughs> Is he? I, I never really looked at Darren's hair before. I, I, I hope you don't look too closely. I like it, actually. I like it. Darren's going out on a limb with the hairdo. Does it have anything spelled in it? Where, where are you seeing Darren's hair? Uh, I, all I see he, is Darren's hat. He's all I see is Darren's hat. He took off his hat, and he put on the helmet, and I saw him. But the audience didn't see that, Dan. We're not, we're not supposed to talk behind the scenes here. All right. Lynch looking to shake off that home run. The, Nash, the American League has tied the game. So, Lynch who... Throws a strike there. There are two down, two... The count is one and one to Darren Corbin of the Orioles. Grounds it to third base. Ruane throws the first. That will not be in time. He's safe. The, as Infield fast a, single. As fast a defensive arm that uh, Ruane has, no match. Well, Corbin is just such a big kid. It only takes him three or four strides to get down to first base. He's got long legs. Indeed. A couple of big boys over at first base. I'm looking now. Bolden and Corbin. I, I wouldn't want to be a... Uh, Caught up in that pickle. <laughs> Here's an equally uh, impressive looking youngster. Esteban Pena. Esteban going Tigers. down. Oof. Went down on strikes. First uh, first time up. Looking to redeem himself. 
at the hands of Curtis. Curtis Bolden. And the American League runners, although although they haven't actually stole, they like giving Lynch something to think about. They like taking the extra step off. Cobbin will go down a second on the pass ball. So Lynch, who who helped his team get to a 3-0 cushion, has now brought the American League back, or helped to bring the American League back into it. Fabulous batting. I called the slug fest. It's 3-3 in the second inning. Third inning, Kyle. Third inning. Keep up, pal. Man. Right on it, right on it. Never much of a score. Runner in scoring position for Esteban Pena. Two down, third inning. American League looking to try to take their first lead of the ball game. It's getting dark, it's getting chilly. I can almost hear Pump and Circumstance getting ready for tomorrow's graduation. Well, there's no band here, Kyle. No, but I can almost hear it. Can't you? You're hearing things, Kyle. What'd you say? You're hearing things. What? You're awful. <laughs> I'm trying though, man. Drew Gamir, where are you, pal? I miss you. I maybe maybe Drew almost hears. Uh, maybe Drew almost hears. And the pitch. Okay. Taking strike three, so Lynch gets out of it, but not before the American League strikes for three on a Calvin Chin rocket. After two and a half, the score is tied, three apiece. Do you think the Boston Celtics could have won 14 World Championships if we discriminated in choosing players? On the court or anywhere else, discrimination is illegal. Unfortunately, it still exists. If you think that you've been fouled by discrimination, call the Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination. Remember, the MCAD fights for your civil rights. Join the fight. Okay, we're back here in the top of the third inning. Uh, bottom of the third inning, rather, where the score is tied, three apiece. Pitching for the American League is Lenny Hong. Due up for the NL is Courtney Valentine, Kevin Mahoney, and Curtis Bolden. The real meat of the order here for the NL. Courtney looking to lead things off his first time up. He struck out on a very, very questionable call. Umpire's done a terrific job tonight, but I don't know about that one. And he he doesn't let him get a chance to mess up this one. Lines the very first pitch into center field for a single. So Courtney Valentine has proved once again why he is my favorite player. There you got a good look at him. I am starting to realize they have about six or seven favorite players Man, here. I sense rain. That would be very annoying because my uh, Saturday night is already over and now it would get rained out. Dan, Kevin I Mahoney chops the very first pitch back to Hong who throws on a Darren Cobbin at first base. Valentine's able to move on a second, but there's one down. Unfortunately, this is an exciting Saturday night for me. Get out more, Kyle. <laughs> I need to. Oh, there he is. He's, he's yelling, he's excited. Cherson, Cherson. <laughs> there's Curtis way. Bolden. Chops first one. Lenny Hong. Gotta love him out there on the mound. Gotta love his hat, actually. I like it. You don't have to love anything, Dan. I gotta love Jeff Cherson of the Red Sox. I gotta love him. That's one thing I don't have to love at I all. I played golf with him one time. <laughs> and he just stormed right ahead of me. I, he I, started off in a foursome, and he just stormed I right ahead of me. I thought he caddied for you. That's what I heard. Uh, I shot about a 130 that day. I don't think I don't think anyone would caddy for but me. But at least you were out there. I, I once again, not, not much of a golfer. <laughs> the pitch to Bolden. Wow. So one on and missed. Wow, what a cut that was. And since I am Danny the Irishman, the greatest predictor of all time, I'm predicting a home run. I That's just me. That's I disagree. Just me. I, I'm Kyle the... Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> Change up and a half by Hong. <laughs> I'm Kyle the conservative Jew and... <laughs> and uh, I, I, I was right, Dan. I called no home run and... I did not know that Hong had that pitch. I, I'm still one for one. I didn't know Hong had a change up like that. Had I known, I would not have predicted a home run. Joey Simeone up. <laughs> anyway. Take strike one. Simeone agreeing with the call. Now that we like know. It, like it matters. <laughs> like, it, like if Simeone had shook his head the other way, it would think, have been a ball. I think Joey said, I've called John, and John probably said, shut up, Joey. Go get in there and bat. Counts one and one. 
No word on what Joey felt about that pitch. No. <laughs> Joey Joey hadn't disclosed his feelings on that one, and, and a good thing, because he's only setting himself up for more ridicule, huh? <laughs> one and one. Lenny Hong's delivery. Chopped up. Strike two. This crowd is getting bigger every minute. Hey, speaking of uh, sisters, Lenny's sister Maureen, also a friend of mine. Lenny is Maureen's sister? Uh, Lenny's <laughs> Maureen's brother, Kyle. Len they're related? They're, they're brother and sister, Kyle. Lenny Hong, probably the greatest pitcher <laughs> to play the game. Kyle looking for brownie points with Maureen. I don't think it's going to work. Two and two the count. Actually, it's one of Maureen's friends, but we, we don't have to talk about this. <laughs> the game. Hong's 2-2 two -two delivery. Swung on and missed strike three. What a changeup Lenny Hong has. I don't know if it's a curve or a changeup. I can't quite tell. Wait, I'm looking at my scorebook. I have I have three outs. Uh, what what the? There are there are three outs. Everybody's saying there's three I got, outs. I gotta help the. Hold on, let me help the game. There are three outs. Barbara Ward, you see in the middle of your screen there, calling three outs. Oh, and and she, she's and right. Strike out the last two. There we go. So the American League once again, Owen, Owen something to me because I was the only one that seemed to know there were three outs. I thought I had messed up scoring, but I was right again. And after three complete, the score is three apiece. You probably know me as the baby doctor. While we often measure children's abilities by their age, adults should not be judged the same way. Job qualifications should be based on abilities, not age. Unfortunately, some employers make age the deciding factor. That's not only unfair, it's illegal. If you're between the ages of 40 and 70 and feel that you've been discriminated against, call MCAD. They fight for your civil rights. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Top of the, yeah, bottom of the fourth inning. Top of the fourth inning, where the American League up, that's Jared Geller of the Indians, facing Alex Ruane on the mound. Alex has played second, third, where he made the defensive play of the game, and is now pitching. Dan, we haven't said our Little League pledge yet. Would you like to? I trust in God, I love my country, and will respect its laws. I will play fair and strive to win, but win or lose, I will always do my best. That was Kyle Payne with the Little League pledge. Ruane's delivery, solid hit, but second baseman Matthew Quinn handles it. Matthew Matt Quinn. The mighty Quinn. Matt Quinn of the Dodgers, who won player of the game in our last last game that we broadcasted. These are, you could have said that a lot quicker saying our last cable cast. Alex Green, replacing John Lynch. Now up Dave Modigliani of the Red Sox. Modigliani hits one, but it's foul down the right field line. Strike one. Modigliani got his pitch, unfortunately couldn't keep it into fair territory. Would have been extra bases. Yeah, that easily could have gone for two or possibly three. That was right down the line. Modigliani, another one with long legs who could have stretched that out to a triple. There you get a good look at Dave. Take strike two there. It's been an exciting game. Well umpired, well coached, good defense, good pitching, good batting. Anything else? That about sums it up, Kyle. Up. Alex Ruane will handle it, and he makes the catch. Ruane, probably an excellent defender at every position. We've seen him at third base. We've seen him pitch. Have and we seen him do anything else, Dan? Uh, if you look at your we've seen him hit. <laughs> we have seen him hit. He's batted. He has. He has. And that's going to bring up Nick Leung. Nick has caught. I believe he's moving to second base next inning. Very aggressive player. Very energetic. A real sparky. Like thank Dave Modigliani for walking in front of our camera. And his entourage there. I don't know if any <laughs> of those other guys were seen. Sean Gilfoy makes a terrific catch in foul territory. And Alex Ruane gets them one, two, three. So after three and a half, the score remains AL3 and L3. 
Can you believe this thing? I knew we shouldn't let him drive. Yeah, you said ride with us. You've been drinking. I said he was okay. I owe you guys. I mean it. If you hadn't stopped me, I'd been with him. Come on. Nobody has to drink and drive, and nobody should. Friends keep friends alive. Okay, we're back here in the bottom of the fourth. Leading things off for the National League will be Michael Walsh Ellis of the Dodgers, the new right fielder. And I have a little treat for Kyle. He got me a hot dog this inning, so Kyle will be taking over as play-by-play -play man this inning. Oh, Dan, this was unexpected. Uh, I'm excited. Mo, 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 Mo Digliani. The pitcher in there is going to pitch too. The National League batter. Ball Shellis. Ball Shellis of Dodger fame. Digging in, making his own batter's box. Mo Digliani taking a moment to wait for the umpire to get set. So Walsh Ellis, set to take Modigliani's first pitch, does and it's a called strike, slicing the middle of the plate in half. Modigliani also throws some pretty good out, heat out there. It's the third uh, AL pitch we've seen and all have looked impressive. Belted down to first, bobbled by first baseman. Darren Corbin, Darren Corbin. So Walsh Ellis in there with an infield hit. All right, we'll call that an error on the first baseman, Cobbin. Tough scoring by Danny Kelly. So Modigliani, quickly with the runner on first base. Had it been, had it been any other first baseman, I may not have given him an error, but I expect <laughs> so much out of Darren that when he bobbles the ball, I'm shocked. Will Dick up right now against the lanky right-hander, Mo Digliani. Dave pitches in to Dick. And there's strike one. Walsh Ellis holding firmly at first base, looking for any sign of a steal from third base coach Bob Monahan or first base coach Barbara Ward. The pitch gets by Hong and or Leung and down goes Walsh Ellis to second base. So quickly, Mo Digliani in a lot of trouble with a man on first on um, second base in. Walsh Ellis, a Coke, and um, Will Dick taking strike two. Walsh Ellis. Walsh Ellis still looking for something to, um, to steal on. Will Dick looking for something to hit. Dick stands in as he takes Modigliani's ball two. Down tied at two and two. Dave Modigliani dealing with the 2 2 count, a man on second base. Will Dick. Sliced foul right beyond the stands. That one wasn't cut. Bounced out into right field territory. It's getting a little chilly. Ball or the wind blowing from third to first. Not really blowing out anymore. So Dave Modigliani set to pitch, does, and that's a ball three, ball four. The base on balls for Will Dick. Quickly runners on first and second. Four. Nima Mazubi. Nima, also Baker School. Nima smashed a home run in our last cable cast. You wouldn't expect it from Nima. Not a big kid, but looks can be deceiving. As we mentioned with Kevin Mahoney, it's the swing that counts. When you got a nice swing, the ball, ball tends to go somewhere. And the lanky Look. Medigliani, quickly in there with strike one. Two. Nima. Nima. And also with Modigliani throwing that hard, it's not as tough to get one and go over. Over the top was that pitch by Modigliani, and that was a ball. Low and a bit outside. Count even at one. 
Capodigliani's wind up in the pitch. A bunt by Nima. Throw to third base. Unable to get Walsh Ellis. He'll go home. Will Dick running over to third base. Nima in at second. The run scores is four to three. National League. Runners on second and third. And Modigliani finding himself in quite the amount of trouble right now. Disappointed in himself. Looking around. A big smile on the face of Nima Mazzubi as he's in there with a single and a advance to second place on the errant throw. And I am mighty excited because I just noticed that uh, Jonah Lee is in there for the AL. He is possibly <laughs> my favorite player in the league. I love him. And the pitch by Modigliani. The versatile Alex Ruane batting in there. He's you heard Joe Simeone's announcement? Help me out. Ruane is 0 for 2 so far, but... Just waiting to explode. Has played fine defensively in the field and did a nice job pitching. This guy's hit more foul balls than anybody besides Kevin Mahoney. So the Pirates, I guess Joe Campagna's instructions were if you can't get it fair, get it foul. Just don't strike out. Uh, maybe that wasn't his instructions, but Modigliani's pitch to Ruane. Outside, runners will stay. Mazzubi, a little anxious on second base. Will Dick standing right in there next to coach Bob Monahan on third. It's getting darker. The clouds are hovering over the campus of Brookline High School here on Cypress Street. And it's getting cold. It is getting a little chilly. I brought my leather. Get her home, the throw over. Out at first base is Ruane. He can't believe it. That is why Jonah Lee is my favorite player. Made a good play. Took a quick look at the runner. Made sure he wasn't going anywhere. Strong throw on to Cobb and not giving Dick any time to go home. And got the out. It was an excellent defensive play. That brings up uh, Carlton Ashley, the catcher from the Pirates. Carlton used to play with his sister Taryn. Now he's there alone. <laughs> Playing on the same baseball team. I believe he takes strike one. Carlton is one of the uh, Heat School students in today's ball game. Mondigliani looking in for the sign. Blunt buff, blunt bluff, I should say. <laughs> a blunt buff, that's what exactly what it was. Do you think Ashley was really uh, gonna bunt there or do you think he was just taking a pitch I think, and giving, I, I giving think the was, pitcher something to think, think about? I think he was trying to rile up the defense and hope for an errant throw, an errant defensive play, trying to get Will Dick home and Mizubi, the quick Mizubi over to third base, possibly to blow this game wide open. Mizubi could also score on an infield hit. He could. But apparently he is trying to bunt. The running bunt, still in effect, didn't work again. Will Dick still staying right on third base? It's kind of an odd call. In this league, there's no leading, so you can't really do a suicide squeeze. No, but Will Dick seemed to scurry, scuttle around these bases pretty quickly. Modigliani with the outside pitch, hoping to retard any effect of the bunt. Going for the foul bunt, in case he was trying it with two strikes. Well, in which case he'd be retired. That's strike three. He could have run to first. Chose not to. First base is open. And here comes Dan's man. I love him. Courtney Valentine. He hasn't hit a home run in two at bats now. He's due. The pride of the Braves. He's due. He is due. Thank you, Buddy Devlin, for walking in front of our camera. What would we do without you, pal? Courtney must only want to hit home runs during the regular season when it can help his team on to victory. Seems to be saving something here. I don't know how much longer that will last. And he takes strike two. Courtney cannot be too happy with the calls of the umpire thus far. Well, I mean, it, it, um, <laughs> John Caruso has been calling the low and inside pitch all night as a strike. So it really can't complain. But to Courtney, he's called them high and outside. Oh, a questionable call now by the base up. Is there a conspiracy against Courtney Valentine? There's no conspiracy. No conspiracy. Modigliani getting himself out of the trouble he could have once been in. Only letting up one run. And the National League regains the lead after four complete. The score is National League four, American League three. He loves
love to be out here in the open, climbing the hills, roaming the fields. The outdoors was his life. He loved the freedom of it all. But the freedom's gone. One mistake changed everything. He was a drinking driver. Drinking and driving can be the mistake of your life. Okay, we're back here in the top of the fifth inning where Alex Ruane is still a pitch for the National League. He's been the first NL pitcher to pitch more than one inning. Now batting for the American League. You have a good view of him. John Martin from the Red Sox has one home run the season, but I saw him put three out in batting practice. Two strikes on him early, but this kid has some power. Did he put them out on you, Dan? Were they, were they, no. Was it versus you? No. Oh, that pitch. People failed to Off make contact Ashley's against head. me. <laughs> Ashley shaking his head after getting belted by a foul ball off Martin. Martin wearing number 21 tonight. Uh, that's and a, the, the significance is? The significance is that he's also a pitcher. He pitches <laughs> once in a while. I, I don't like being laughed at, okay? <laughs> Unless I bring it on myself. And I strike three. Ruane has retired all four batters he's faced. He has looked good thus far. Wait a sec. We and that brings time up. To talk about John Martin. John Martin's at bat is over, and now up is Lucas Epps. Of the Lucas Batter Epp. There you got a good view of John Martin walking by our camera. Players <laughs> no, are just you, totally John. disregarding John Healy's fine camera work. It's like he wasn't there. Uh, uh, that, well, that's feeble, feeble attempt by Epps. I didn't like that at all. To get out of the way of the poor, poor, poor cable cast. But more, more important, the batter is Lucas Epps. Start the game in right field. This is first at bat, though. Big swing and a miss. Ruane is once again ahead of the batter. All right, Dan, if we're not as good as Leno, could we be Roseanne? I mean, if we're in that bracket? Count is one and one. <laughs> we're just looking to please our target audience, and that's these fine players out here. This is Count true. Count is one and two. It's getting dark. I don't know how much longer this light is actually going to be ample. Oh, oh my God. John Healy almost got it. He blocked the camera and almost made a catch. Your poor wife in the stands. John Healy with a deep <laughs> breath after that one. He was nervous. <laughs> one, of the, one of the fathers hoped he, uh, hoped he was going to still be able to have kids after that foul ball. -y. Or at least get a change of underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas Epps with the one-two count. Two and two. Ruane's delivery. And then the count is full. Epps has a nice chain. I don't know if, don't know if you can see that on TV. Now, if that were oil can boy, that chain would be off right now. Which is true. And Epps walks. Lucas scuttling down to first base to be greeted by Nate Pops Showstack. And can we say enough about that, man? No. Nate Pops shows that. foundation in Brookline Youth Baseball, might we say. Almost as big as Stan Payne in this league. And there's Buddy Dublin, once again, ducking while he was out of the way of the camera and then standing up while the camera was on him. Uh, in typical Dublin fashion. Better not, better not Ben Irish joke. I, I might have missed it. But. This is Jesse Carton of the Red Sox. <laughs> no, no Irish joke, Dan. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want the greater half of Brookline Village up against me. Ooh, wow. Another questionable call there. Not trying to get on the umpire here, John Caruso, but Jesse Carton, first baseman, Red Sox. The pitch. Two and two. Wearing number 15. I can't think of any player this 15. Can you, Dan? Uh, no. Wow, huh? what, a, what an obscure number that is. That is an obscure number. Maybe, Maybe he could make it famous. And the count's full. Uh, We're next to Nick Lee Young here. Nick Catcher from the Red Sox. Nick, Nick drinking doing a fine Coke. Nope. job. No better drink than Coke during Nick, an All-Star game. Not huh, Nick, not drinking Coke. <laughs> Nick almost choked on his Coke when he said that. And he walks. So Ruane, after retiring the first four batters, has walked the last two. And it's first and second with one down. And the batter is Jonah Lee. Somebody's got Chinese food. Can you smell it? I'm jealous. Me too. From the Orioles. Jonah, 
That that was not Chinese food, Kyle. <laughs> oh. The batter is Jonah Lee. Coach Capagna going out there to have a talk with his student, Alex Ruane. Of course, Coach Capagna also coached him during the regular season. My friend Dory from the high school has just showed up. I'd like to say hi to her. That's your brother? Your last name Shafrir? Dory Shafrir is here. Mike Shafrir on deck. Mike Shafrir, one of the premier <laughs> players in this league. Possibly the best one. And we like Dory. <laughs> but back to action. That's why we're talking about Dory. They have Jonah Lee. <laughs> Takes a strike. I don't really know why the runners jump off the base like that after the catcher has the ball. Because they're not going to steal. They've got to do something. They've got to keep, I don't keep know. warm or something. I don't know. Jonah takes another ball, and they don't—they don't want to pitch to Jonah. And quite frankly, I—I I wouldn't. I'll pitch to Jonah. Jonah would hit a home run off you. Uh, Jonah would probably walk on four straight balls, actually. <laughs> Jonah takes another one. As you were talking earlier about intentional walks, Jonah was also intentionally walked. When you got a player of Jonah's caliber, you know, obviously you don't want to pitch oh, to him. Big swing and a miss. I couldn't see. Mike Schaffrier is uh, blocking my way the here. The on-deck batter should not be in our view. There we go. Mike Schaffrier helping us out. shouldn't be swinging the bat around other people. Uh, Jonah Lee, one of the finest defensive players not only this season, but I have ever seen in all my years of watching and playing in Brookline Youth Baseball. On the pass ball, the runners go to second and third. Ruane's having a little control problems here in his second inning of pitching. It's the fifth inning of a scheduled nine inning ball game. That's a lot of baseball for these kids to be playing. It is, but there are so many players and they're all the best. Wow, that is a shot! It's going to go in for extra bases. One runner's in. Carton will score. Jonah Lee's into second, standing up with a double. Once like again, excitement is the only word over here on the American League, which is why we're yelling. <laughs> Amazing bash by Jonah Lee as you stand him laughing there in second base. As you see him laughing there in second base, right out to the fence in a matter of no time. We're ready for a new batter. This is Mike Schaffrier. Dory's little brother, trying to keep the Oriole connection going. Mike is an excellent, excellent defensive player. Fine catcher, as well as a fine infielder. He's in right field right now. I haven't seen him play any outfield this season. He's taking two strikes here, Ruane looking to battle back. And after the pass ball, there were runners on second and third. Maybe they should have walked Jonah Lee. Maybe Barbara Ward had the right idea. Shafrir goes down swinging, and Ruane has struck out his second batter of the inning. That was one of the quickest at bats of the game. Yeah, it really was. Ruane looked like he was a little angry after that double and was looking to get quick revenge. He's still a champ, though. He is Dory's brother. I, I, I don't know Dory. But but you tried to be friends with her anyway. Why, why not, Dan? The story I... of your life, Kyle. She came over and talked to me, and you sat there. <laughs> but here's Josh Friedman of the Tigers. Big cut and a miss for strike one. I pitched to Josh in batting practice before the game. He, he racked you, Dan. He, he looked okay. <laughs> he, nah, Josh, Josh more than held his own. They almost called me on to pitch. He, he racked you, Dan. <laughs> and he fouls one into the stands there. One of his teammates will handle it, though. From the Tigers, Josh Friedman. So we're pretty used to this view of home plate from here, aren't we? Looking along at the viewers from the fence. I think if you look to the left of your screen, the second man over is George, the high school trainer. George is the high school trainer. And a good friend of mine. But Josh Friedman strikes out. And Ruane strikes out the side despite letting up two runs. After four and a half, the American League has re-taken the lead. And the score is now American League five, National League four. It's simple. One night, I don't drink. I drive them home. Another night, my friend doesn't drink. He drives us home. Nobody had to worry about getting home. They knew they had me to drive them. I took care of them, you know? Did I have a good time? <laughs> Listen, that's the night I'm the best friend my friends could have. I'm bringing them home alive. Hey, 
We can handle it better. Next time you go out, take your turn at passing up alcohol for the night. And bring him home alive. Oh. Okay, we're back here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And due up for the National League will be Sean Gilfoy of the Braves leading things off. Following him will be Lang from the Mets and Quinn of the Dodgers. The new pitcher for the American League is Josh Friedman. Coming down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Defense, guys. Gilfoy in at the plate. Good job on the TV last night. Thank you very much. Is this Kelly or is this Yep, my Danny Kelly. We're back at a live action as you see Josh Friedman's first pitch. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Well, we heard somebody yelling, watch out. Everybody knew, I think, to watch out. The loudest <laughs> loudest man in the ballpark right now is probably this gentleman right behind our microphone. Except the guy with the microphone. Except for me. <laughs> Major Dad. What a great picture we have on our monitor, huh, Dan? <laughs> This is, a, this is a great night. All the stars are out. What a Brookline night. <laughs> Sean, Sean Gilfoy takes that one just a little bit high. Sean the boy Gilfoy. Why, why do you bother? <laughs> why, why do you try to give nicknames to these kids? I, I need to. Well, we, we got a nickname for the man coming into our screen now, Pops. There he was. There, there he is. There's the man, the living legend of Brookline Youth Baseball. Four to three. Look like a tie pup. Friedman, <coughs> Friedman's delivery. <laughs> Swung on and missed, strike three. So he gets Gilfoy. Over the last uh, couple innings, or at least one inning, there hasn't been the slugfest I predicted. As usual, Kyle, your, your predictions aren't very good. Oh, Dan, it's 5-4. Of course it is. Don't, don't drink my water. That's some lovely Avion spring water that Kyle Payne has supplied for tonight's game. That's backwash, though, Dan. And this is Nate Link up from the Mets. Nate Link of the Mets. A first-year player for the Mets. Wow, that's a shot. That could be gone. Wow, taken in at the warning track. Lucas Epps with a fine catch at the fence. We got a good look at Lucas Epps. He's one pumped up kid right now. Lucas tracked that one down. There you see. Didn't worry about the wall, just went and caught that ball. Well, there's no wall, it's a fence. Josh Friedman has to be counting his blessings right there. And Nate Link has to be a little disappointed. It looked like he was going to be the hero to tie it up. Uh, they just announced this is Mike Walsh Ellis, but that's that's actually Matthew Quinn up there, the second baseman. Matt's a fine, fine all-around athlete. Friedman's delivery. Matthew takes it high. Well, luckily we're here tonight where the mosquitoes haven't come out yet. I just got one on my leg, actually. I guess I'm wearing long pants. I wouldn't know. Uh, you don't have the legs I do. <laughs> Thank gosh. And the count is two and one. That now is officially Matt Quinn, as opposed to it unofficially being him. I knew it was him the whole time. That's three straight inside pitches on the mighty Quinn. Counts three and one. Matt, as I mentioned in our last broadcast, goes to Heat School. I also babysit for Matt. He's a fine, fine Nerf basketball player. <laughs> Count is three and one. Swung on, and that could drop. Mike Schaffrier cannot yeah. get to it, and Quinn is in there with a single. As you hear some rowdy fans in back of us here. 
It's Chris McHugh of the Pirates. It is Chris McHugh. Chris McHugh is probably one of the once right hockey players of his age right now. Once again, Kyle, I was on top of that way before you were. Now this is Mike Walsh Ellis, the right fielder. So, Joseph Zimioni's first mistake of the game. <laughs> Not his last, I'm sure. No. I, I, I beg you know, I, he's a doctor. He, I, I he think, is. I think he'll do fine. And quite the ball player. A member of the Massachusetts General Hospital softball team. Takes home the state championship every year. Or at least the hospital championship. I heard Beth Israel has uh, <laughs> quite a team of sluggers. <laughs> <laughs> the count is now... 0-2 on Ellis, I believe. Uh, I hope you're not exchanging um, anything that has to do with race, uh, Dan, or, or religion. I, I, I didn't say anything, Kyle. Okay. It's a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Walsh, Ellis falls off another one. Two strikes now. We're here in the bottom of the fifth. Oh. Quite the ways to go. This game is far from over. We still seen we still haven't seen some mighty players. We still haven't seen some of the finest actually. We still would like to see Alexis pitch. Calvin Chin has been taken out of the game after his uh, home run. Calvin and had the game of his life right I'd now. I'd like to see him get another at bat. Just a little curtain call for Cal? Why not? It's a lot of C's. Out of play, out of play. Mr. Cherson, right on top of that call. <laughs> there you got a good view of a fan. I think John, John must have a purpose for showing him. I'm not sure who it is, though. Possibly. That's his wife. That's his wife. That's good enough reason for somewhere, me. Somewhere over there was his wife. I see, I see Mrs. Healy now. I, I Mrs. Healy's know. the one with the uh, orange, orangish, pinkish. Oh, she's right there on the, on the screen there. Yeah, there she is. There she is. I'm pointing to her right now. Right there. I'd like her to wave. She didn't. The hit up the middle. It's in there for a single. Quinn will hold it second. And the Dodger connection Again, has reached base. Two in a row here after after Friedman has reached. Had, after Friedman had retired the first two batters, rather, the two Dodgers have singled back to back. The ball just out of the reach of Jared Geller there. Jared Geller, brother of Lauren Geller, a sophomore at Brooklyn High School. Uh, Lauren hasn't come over to speak to us yet, but Jared... Jared tried to get that one, but right, holding a player on at first base, he couldn't do that. Anticipating a bunt. The batter is now the batter is now yet another Dodger, Will Dick. Batter, the National League, Will Dick. Dr. Simeone. Uh, Dr. Simeone, yeah, check with me on that one. How, how, how can you mispronounce Will Dick? That's my question. <laughs> and the hit into right field, that couldn't fall. It's called a foul ball, and that is about the fourth or fifth ball this game that has just gone foul down the right field line. Which of all, all of them pretty much could have been uh, critical extra balls in base this game. hits. Uh, well, uh, regardless, I mean, uh, any extra base hit is going to be critical at this point. The, the score one run tied. ball game, <laughs> and uh, I think the key now, the National League, in my opinion, will have to get a few runs here before Alexis comes in the game to pitch because quite frankly I don't I happen to think that I don't think the Red Sox could score I happen against to think, him. I happen to think Joe Campagna has a few tricks up his sleeve. Good pitch, you guys. Good pitch right now. Well you never know with Coach Campagna. Can't argue with his methods though. Two time defending champ. The Pirates actually are the four time defending champ. But uh, my dad Gene Kelly was the coach for two of those years. Yep. Stan Payne in the ranks looking to be the most successful coach down the road. He's the coach of the Mets right now. Friedman's delivery to Will Dick. Dick takes it high. I don't know if you can see the wave in the far right-hand portion of your screen that the National League rally caps are on. It's a little early for rally caps here. We still got a solid uh, Dan, four wanna, innings to play. I want to go home and catch um, catch a little late night. Oh, that's shot to Geller, but it gets through his legs. Matt Quinn's going to try to score. The throw home. Cut off by Carton. Carton throws to second. Martin catches it, but it's going to be too late. Matt Quinn scores. Mike Walsh Ellis is on to third. Once Quinn Will Dick is into second with a double. And the National League has tied the game. Three Dodgers in a row have produced this rally. And although they finished the regular season in eighth place overall, 
the Dodgers prove right there. They have a couple of superstars on their team. I agree. Once Will Dick turned the risky third base corner, there was, that was no, Matt Quinn. Matt Quinn turned the risky third base corner. There was no stopping Will Dick from getting to second base. No throw would have stopped him. I actually uh, and Walsh Ellis in there at third. I kind of wonder uh, if maybe Jesse Carton made an unwise move there, cutting that ball off. It looked like Fia just let that go. That could have been an interesting play at home plate. It could have been. But more importantly now is the batter, Nima Mazubi. Got a nice, nice little picture of him there. Friedman looks like he's picking up steam in this inning. There are two outs, and I hear Coach Shearson telling his team to go home. He must not realize there are two down. Uh, maybe not. But then again, we saw earlier the American League did not leave the field after retiring three. <laughs> Come on, Chuck. You're always due to get a hearty laugh out of me, Dan, and I still hope the viewing audience is counting the number of different laughs I, I sport. I think the viewing audience is trying to block you out. It's just a bad memory. Oh, uh, there might only be one out here. We're just not sure at this point. No, there are two outs. There are two outs. It's As usual, confirmed. I was correct. But I, I wasn't wrong. I want that to be known. Uh, a canny who will re remain nameless try to correct me, and that was his mistake right there. You just don't correct the kid who's never wrong. It was not Jen Canny. Who's that girl? We're running out of tape. But we'll find some way to bring you the action. That's right. Well, Mizubi. Nima takes that one high <laughs> I think, I think and tight. I think he just wanted to fall down. It, it sure looked like it, didn't it? Coach Jeff Cheerson encouraging that high fastball. Almost encouraging violence. <laughs> what a hothead. No. <laughs> no obviously, Only just trying to encourage his pitcher. That's exactly what he was doing. Jeff Cheerson's team finished, finished second in the regular season. Oh, takes strike three on a questionable low count. So Again. Friedman gets out of it despite letting up one run on the three three hits by Dodgers. After five full, the score is tied once more. American League five, National League five. Sometimes you know you're the one everybody's counting on to do the job. Whether you're a player or a fan. The one who can step in and turn things around so everybody wins. We lose too many lives when fans drive after drinking too much. So before you go to the game, choose the one guy you can count on to drive home. The designated driver. When you think about it, that's your most valuable player. 